Let's like, just get it out there. Okay. You owe the government some money. Yeah. And the states, they're actually not as patient as the IRS. They, they're brutal. The last thing you want to do is nothing. You got to make a plan and you must communicate that to the IRS because there's some options. They give you options to say, hey, work with us. Having a path can give you some hope. And I'd rather you have a feeling of hope than one of despair. Welcome everyone to the Main Street Business Podcast with Matt Sorensen and Mark Kohler. We're excited to be with you today, even though the topic is a little tough yeah I think <laughs> if you're tough. listening to this where you can either you're listening for a friend a family member maybe a client and it could be yourself so we want to be sensitive you know gosh we've got so much to say this is going to be super helpful we're not going to joke around too much we've got a lot to cover so i don't know there's touchy feely issues then there's some very important yeah. technical issues let's just get it out there okay you owe the government some money yeah. and you're okay if you're okay. a good person <laughs> and i vote the government money and gosh darn it people like you yes yes <laughs> matt i also speak for laugh both of us have had our yeah. 15 blues where we're like oh, oh it's gonna i'm gonna have to pay in december when i get a, i've got a deal going down or i got some more rev coming yeah so the important thing is you have to know that there is very very <laughs> I'm calling myself successful at this point, right? And that, whatever. <laughs> There's very successful clients of ours, and if you think we're successful, we're trying. Yeah, we it's it's common. Now, there's some very, very important things you don't do in this process and very important things you do do. But your biggest enemy is apathy or the uh, uh, mm. ostrich. You know, I'm just going to stick my head in the sand. It'll go away. I'll come up when I can solve it. No, 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 no. Yeah. Or it, it, let me just ignore this because I don't, I don't want to have to deal with it. Um, that is the worst thing you can do with the IRS or these state take tax collection agencies, which are a lot of times more aggressive than the IRS. But the last thing you want to do is nothing. You got to make a plan and you must communicate that to the IRS because there's some options. They give you options to say, hey, work with us. They've got a lot of people that owe them money too. You're not alone and they have programs and options. We want to make sure everybody knows what are the ways you can work with the IRS to cut a deal, buy yourself some time and avoid some of the costly mistakes that can happen. Because let me tell you what's gonna happen if you do nothing. You're gonna get a federal tax lien. If you owe the IRS money and you just stick your head in the sand, you're gonna not only get some nasty letters coming your way, but eventually you're gonna get a federal tax lien. And you know what that hits? Your credit. You know how long it's gonna take to recover from that thing hitting your credit? How many banks wanna lend someone money that has a federal tax lien? Yeah. Not a lot. <laughs> yeah, and just to put a little fear of the almighty in you too. If you got problems with the IRS, you probably have problems with the state as well. Yeah. And the states, they're actually not as patient as the IRS. They, they're they brutal. Yeah. Um, and those states have come hard and fast at bank accounts with garnishments and all that. Now, let me, again, I want to say this another, from another mindset perspective. Let's just think. When you have a thought that I'm in a hole, I don't know how I'm going to get out, that thought creates a feeling. And that feeling could be fear. It could be one of, well, I'm a loser anyway. There's nothing I can do. So I'm just glad to do nothing. <laughs> And, and that, so those thoughts cause us to do, sometimes take the wrong approach. So a thought that we want to replace that with, with you here today, this is, a, this will empower you, is that knowledge eliminates fear. Having a path can give you some hope. And I'd rather you have a feeling of hope than one of despair. So when Matt just said, hey, there's solutions here. Okay, pay attention. We'll make some notes. You may have listened to this several times. And and mm -hmm. and it, so that that's the trick. That's the trick. There's no magic bullet. We yeah. don't have like a phone number you're going to call. They're going to pay the bill for you. But we can't <laughs> yeah. give you techniques that will help you have hope, yeah. not despair. Yeah. And, but the, you need a little tough love too. And I want you to have hope, but know that you'll get through it. There's, you know, as happens to a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs and investors. I know a lot of you listening. That's what you are. Have to deal with this at some point in their career. Um, sometimes it happens every, more often you, that it happens a lot more than you think. So I just want to say you're not alone, but at the same time, you have to act and take action on this. And, um, so we're going to go through the options here, but, um, there's just so many people that have gotten in trouble with the IRS. Like Shakira is getting chased now by the actually the Spanish tax authorities. Um, you know, there's uh, there's always a celebrity getting chased down. You know, by some government agency for for taxes, and so um, it can happen to anyone. So I'm trying to say, don't feel bad. Okay, step one. I'm going to say step one is 
always file your tax returns. Step one, even if you can't pay, a lot of people think, well, I can't pay, so I better, I don't need to file or I can't file or I don't have all my yeah. information. I'm not going to wrap myself out. I'm, you know, I'm not going to count it. If I don't file, they won't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, this shit is not coming. Yeah, the penalties and interest for not filing are worse than filing and not paying. Here we are. This is like the dating world. Ghosting your girlfriend or boyfriend is far worse in the long run than just calling them up going, we're done. That's it. Yeah. Let them know. Let yeah. the IRS know where you're at. And that they they don't like to be in the dark. So I'm going to say this right now. We're, we're three weeks out to October 16th. Uh, this could be some of you listening to this in the spring or two years from now. Whatever the deadline is you're facing, if it, you can file an extension, do. But if you're at that final D-Day, do whatever it takes to file your day in return. Even yeah. if you can't pay. Put it in a big old goose egg when it says payment. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Now the IRS knows what that what's going on, and the penalties are half as much, mm-hmm. really, in effect. Yeah. And I think to follow your dating example there, I think kind of like the filing your tax return and not paying is kind of like the it's not me, it's you. <laughs> I think that's the that's what you're saying. You're like, you're like, I filed and did my part. It's you. You're asking for too much <laughs> yeah. in this relationship. No, it's on you to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um okay, so File first. All right, file first. Now, once you file, you got to start making a plan if you owe. And I want to say, actually, I think, and just working with clients over the years on this, if you owe federal, you're typically going to owe state. And I generally like to tell clients to focus on the state first because they come faster. They start, you're going to get the letters faster. The IRS, thank goodness, is disorganized and slow. <laughs> and slow and they don't even answer their phone when you do try to call them and you're going to owe the state less yes it's easier if you think of like the debt snowball and ramsey concept mm-hmm. get that one out of the way first yeah now it doesn't mean you again ignore the irs yes but from a financial standpoint you want to think okay i'm going to get the state out of the way. yes and i think a lot of people think backwards okay. i got to get the big one i got to get the irs off my back the big bad irs and i'll deal with my state later no 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 Work with your state first. Yeah, I write these down too, because I love this. I've got several articles out there. I always need to update them with new. So always file, everybody, if you're taking notes, always file. Number two, focus financially on the state first. Um, And if I could say this too, um, you need to buy some time. And I'm going to give you a spoiler alert, because I want Matt to comment on this. He's really good at it, is he's made these phone calls countless times. Yeah. Is you've got to let... you, you file, and then you got to let them know it's coming. There, there's a technique there. And then yeah. the fourth step I want to say is you're going to start looking for the money somewhere to borrow. You want to borrow money from someone. You don't, you'd rather have almost any other borrower or <laughs> any other lender yeah. than the IRS or the state. Now, that's going to be step four. But you kind of need to ask for a breather. What do you, you've yeah. talked about that so many times. Yeah, the breather is this called 180 day to pay. So as long as you owe less than $100,000 to the IRS, you can call them up and just say, hey, I'm gonna pay this all off in one lump sum within 180 days. They will automatically grant that as long as it's under $100,000. No financial statement you gotta send, which in other options, you have to disclose all your finances and why you can't afford to send them money. But this one, if you're under 100K, or if you can make a payment to get you under 100K, so maybe a 120, you're like, I can throw them 20 now, then freaking call them and be like, I'm gonna pay you in 180 days. And I've had to do that myself. A lot of clients have to do that. They're a little surprised at the end of the year. And like, dang, that was more, I had more than I thought, yeah. but I can catch up, you know, just give me, give me six months and I can get back up and get on top of it. So um, always start with the 180 day to pay. There's no fee for it. There's no setup fee. You don't have to make monthly payments. You can just lump sum it in that 180 days. You have to call them. But you got a call. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, ooh, I've got another major tip. Uh, so you got a call. Uh, and then with the state, it may be 30 days. It may be 60. Every state's going to be a little different. Yeah. But you're going to make two phone calls. Maybe a third one to your mom. But, and have her give me a kiss and a hug. But you're going to call the IRS, ask for a 180 day grace period. Uh, and then a state, get whatever grace period you can get. Then number four, you're going to start looking for a lender. And that could be friends, family, sell crap, equity in your home, second mortgage. I don't know. But the interest and penalties are always going to be cheaper after October 16th. Now, if you're paying between April 15th and October 15th, 
the IRS interest rates aren't that bad. You know, credit cards are worse. But after a October 16th, this little grace period, I want to point out, you're not getting out of penalties. You don't get that yeah. interest. Yeah. You're just getting out of them making your life hell. Yeah, they're not in the collection process. You're not getting nasty letters. There's no tax lien that's going to go out. There's no wage garnishment that can hit your bank account or your wages. The penalties are adding up. Yep. And those are my article, yada, yada. Uh, now, here's a, another important tip. The IRS will never call you. The state will never call you. Now, I had a scam artist call. I've, I've had two scam interactions in the last 10 days, phone calls. And one I made outbound to what I thought was a support company of HP because I was trying to get a solution. Mm. And I got routed to a scammer and I got sucked into it for a good five minutes until I realized what was going on. And then I had a call this morning from a scammer. Um, now, you don't want to let loose. You're pissed because scammers can, who knows what damage they could cause. Yeah. So just say, sorry, not arrested. Hang on. But the point being is the IRS will never call you. They're going to send you letters. You're going to call them. So just ignore any calls from the IRS freaking out saying you need to send money. Yeah. Now it's funny. I, I went to the IRS website just to make sure the programs are the same and the numbers. And the IRS gives you three options if you owe the IRS money okay. to, for, to make a payment arrangement. Okay. Do you want to know what their first option was? Apple Pay. Pay now. <laughs> <laughs> Pay now. And you're thinking, this is funny. I thought this was funny. Why would they're like zero setup fee, no future penalties or interest. Pay the amount due today. Like, uh, what? Someone's going to the IRS website to learn, like, how do I set up a payment <laughs> arrangement with the IRS because I can't pay? <laughs> All right. Anyways, that was, that was fine. Yes. Then they got the short-term payment plan. That was 180 days or less. Now, if you need more than 180 days, you can do a long-term payment arrangement. Installment it, agreement. Called an installment agreement. Yep. yep. And and so, and that, you're typically going to pay monthly in that type of deal. But what happens there is, if you owe 50,000 or more, now the, now the number changes. If it's 50,000 or more, and because it's a long-term payment arrangement, you have to disclose your finances. If you're under 50 and you're like, oh, I'm gonna pay it over time, you don't have to disclose your financials. You can kind of outline over a six-year window how much you can afford to pay to try to get paid off. But if you owe more than 50, you gotta divulge your assets and your income to the IRS, which I know no one is excited to do. Yeah. They know your income, for your taxes, but do you want to give them all your assets to say, I can't afford to pay you, but I've got all these assets over here. Well, and, and I'll say sometimes you don't have a choice and it's not a, a, a completely yeah. terrible thing. You're, you're, you're like, yeah, you want to see the trade wreck? Here it is. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's not much to show. Yeah. You're, you're in a problem because your finances aren't problems. So yeah. just pony up, be honest and disclose. But I will say it another way too. The installment agreement is the fallback because you couldn't find any other lender. Mm. See, during that 180 yeah, days, yeah. you're gonna be shopping. You're gonna be calling up your great uncle, your aunt, your grandma, your mom, signing loans at least, you know, whatever. You're gonna yeah. sell crap, that RV sitting on the side of the house you drove twice last year, sell it, the boat, sell it. Yeah. <laughs> you can always get those assets back, but you can't get your life back sometimes emotionally when you have the IRS hanging over you. So sell assets, borrow money. Then if that doesn't work, and hopefully you've got the state at least taken care of, you go to the installment agreement. That's where you have this 50 grand or more disclosure, then under 50 grand is automatic. Typically, it's going to be a five-year payment plan. You're still going to pay penalties yeah. and interest. See, that's why you don't want to be in an installment agreement. Penalties and interest continue. So it's not like you stop that, oh, I'm in an installment agreement, so I'm, I'm, I'm your preferred borrower. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. They just stop collection. That means they don't lean your house. They don't garnish your wages. They don't hit your bank account. Because see, if you don't sign the installment agreement, they're going to come hard. Yeah. I've had clients call me, Mark, I'm hiding behind the couch. There's an IRS agent at my door. They will knock on your door. And they'll call you. But yeah. They will knock on your door. Yeah. And those, those ones, are, they're the criminal enforcement division usually. And the, when it gets to that, it starts to get criminal. If someone's starting to come out, those, they actually have badges and guns. Yeah. You know, they actually have badges and guns. Okay, so actually on the on the installment agreement, it's 72 months is the max time, which could be of six years. Yeah, 72 months. Um, now there's a fee for that. There's a monthly fee. It's like 31 bucks a month that you're getting charged a fee just to, to, to be able to have that opportunity to pay. Kind of kind of, kind of a bummer. But um, you're, again, you're, you're buying yourself time. I love it. Very good. Very good. Um, oh, I have one other tip. Okay. For you business owners, just 
heaven forbid, one of you are listening, and this is payroll liability. Oh, we've got to say a word or two about that. Payroll liability is like sacred money to the IRS. So if you run a business, you've got payroll, and you weren't able to make that 941 deposit because you had to pay other bills, there is no other bill that's more important than paying payroll taxes that you withheld. We've had clients that Matt and I have met with that two years later were like, uh, you're in jail? Oh, okay. Yeah. You no, know, it is bad. You, they will prosecute and they would fast and hard. So that's now, so just be careful. And you of you that have payroll liabilities, those are next level. And you're, you're literally selling everything you owe. And, uh, and hopefully it's not that bad. These clients, they literally had blown the money. They had nothing. And the IRS is like, okay. Yeah. You're going to go to jail then. Either we want money or you go to jail. And that's what we came down to. Yeah. Yeah. Oof, I feel bad for anybody that got to get in that problem. Um, for everybody, make sure you, that's, when you say in payroll, this is like the withholding you're doing from your employees to pay their taxes and you don't actually send it to the IRS because you didn't have any money in your business, but you had enough to at least cut your employee their check. Oof. That is dangerous. All right. Well, what if I can't even do an, a payment agreement? There are some options where you can try to settle with the IRS. Mm. Now, is, are we, is it two in the morning that I'm eating cereal? Watching? That's right, settle with the IRS for pennies on the dollar. <laughs> Do you owe the IRS any money? Do you owe the IRS more than $10,000? Call us at 1-800, you know, oh settle for less. And <laughs> then, yeah, then it's insult to injury. I just blew five grand with the company. Yeah, <laughs> you owe the IRS 10 grand. You just spent less. five grand, yeah. So, um, now, be careful on any of those services. That's what the joke we're trying to make there, if you didn't sense the sarcasm, mm -hmm. is that's a lot of BS about settling for pennies on the dollar. Yes, can you cut deals with the IRS and something called an offer and compromise? Yes, we've helped clients over the years do it. I've done them before. Um, Leach and one of our attorneys in our California office has done many of these for clients over the years. But in an offer and compromise, what you're doing is you're telling the IRS, hey, I want to cut a deal. And the IRS will cut a deal in a couple of different ways. You have to have a reason. You have to have a reasonable basis. The first is doubt as to liability. You're basically saying, hey, IRS, I actually don't owe you money. Now, the, usually this one is used as, let's say you filed your taxes and you said you didn't know, and the IRS reassessed it and said, ah, we're denying these deductions or we calculated a different way. And, and, audit, and yeah. yeah, the audit happened and, you, and, and they end up determining you owe them money. Well, you can sit, or let's say- You can fight that. Yeah, or let's say, and I've had this, I had this one long time ago. I did this in law school, by the way. I, was, I did these uh, tax kind of law school. I was doing this like 20 years ago, crazy. But is if you missed certain deductions, and when you file, then you need to amend. And then the amendment becomes an issue. The amended return becomes an issue. Now you can file the offer and compromise and you have to battle it out with the IRS. The nice thing about the offer and compromise, and I'm gonna to get to the other basis you can do, but on doubt just liability, the nice thing about an offer and compromise is it, is it stops the collection process too while it's pending. Yes. Okay, now the IRS is like, hey, we're gonna look into this. Now you had to disclose all your financials again. You have to give this financial statement to them, but you're going to say, I don't owe it because of X. Yep. Okay. And a lot of times it's important because a lot of times you've been dealing with like, you can't talk to anyone at the IRS yep. and you're not on anyone. Now it's going to go to a real revenue officer. Yeah. I, I'm loving where you went with this. Um, let's unpack it a little bit more. So a lot of people get this big tax bill and some of the reactions may, might be, man, my CPA sucks. <laughs> or maybe I shouldn't have done it on turbo. Yeah. And someone goes, you owe the IRS that much? Did you deduct this? And all of a sudden your little friend group starts saying, dude, you got probably a crappy tax return. Yeah. So you, you, you want to pay the IRS and try to get your money back? I would, that's, oof. I like this doubt as to liability. You're going to raise the red flag. And when you do a doubt as to liability, you're going to submit that amended return and say, here's how much I really do owe you. And that's gonna unwind a lot of penalties and a lot of interest and freaking love it. The one cautionary point I have here though, is this is why putting your head in the sand could be disastrous. Because claiming doubt as to liability, there's clocks that start to tick as to amending a return. You, you could wait too long and the amendment is not allowed. Or the IRS may have done this assessment Matt talked about, 
and then you have 90 days to reply. You never reply. Yeah. So if you miss some of the statute of limitations, uh, then it, you can't do doubt to liability. They're like, you already had your chance to clean this. You missed it. So the sooner you get engaged in this process, the better. Yeah. Now, in the offer and compromise, you're basically negotiating, right? And the IRS could be like, nah, no dice at all, all right? But you can actually negotiate this. Um, and a lot of times what you need to do is you have to come up with a lump sum payment, all right? Um, or you can get a payment plan up to 24 months in an offer and compromise. But if you need more than that, you're back to installment agreement. Long-term installment agreement or up to six six years. So... Um, so if you're going to cut a deal, you've got to come up with the money at least within 24 months. Now, here's a trick to this, and this is really important, is, was I did some of these in law school. I remember my law school professor, he was like, whenever you're making an offer to pay, remember, you don't have money. <laughs> so you're going to explain how you're going to come up with the money. Mom is going to loan me some money to pay this tax. Because if you're like, I'm going to pay this tax, I'll pay you, I'm going to, you know, I owe 100, I'll pay you 50 grand right now. They're going to be like, we're just going to go take that 50 grand and then come get the other 50 later. Like the IRS has the ability to do that. So you need to have a good answer of either I have future income I'm going to make that I'm going to come into or that you wouldn't be able to collect. Or maybe it's a family member that's going to loan me money. Um, otherwise, if you're like saying, well, I'm going to drop this money. They're like, why isn't this on your financial statement that you sent us? <laughs> like yeah. this 50K that you're trying to negotiate. Yeah. So I had 50 grand on my ma mattress. You do? Well, we will yeah. on Saturday morning. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We're with the mattress police. Yeah. Uh, and if there's no tax on these mattresses, we're going to have a problem. Yeah, there's going to be a problem there too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Now we're going to look into that. Okay, okay. Now here's a subtle, I want to help those tracking the conversation. Matt quickly moved to cutting a deal. Remember, if you're in the doubt as to liability lane, yeah. you're going to stay in that lane until you get an offer in. You're going to be like, okay, we're going to fight this out. Hopefully, you didn't miss any deadlines. You're going to get proper counsel involved, tax lawyer, or CPA, or enrolled agent that knows what they're doing, and you're going to start that process. If and when that's over, meaning you doubt as to liability, there's still some amount at the end of the day. Maybe you get it all resolved. Maybe they end up owing you. We have clients that do that. They end up getting a refund when they do it right. Uh, but follow that process to its conclusion. Yeah. Then if you still owe, that's when Matt was like, now you cut a deal. Yeah. So the offer and compromise is this proposal as to doubt as to ability to pay. Yeah. And don't, so it's doubt to liability. And then I don't have the ability to pay. Yeah. Sometimes I call it doubt as to collectability. Yeah, sorry. sorry. The, the IRS can't collect you, which is the, you, know, you have no ability to pay. So, but you're like, but I can come up with the money from a friend, from a family member, yeah. you know? Now, here's a subtle point too. This is really a good, this, we're giving you our inside secrets here. This is <laughs> because notice what Matt said. When you make your offer to cut a deal, you're going to say, my mom's going to lend me the money. If you say, my money's already in my bank account, my mom gave it to me, game over. They're going to come take it. Yeah. <laughs> you missed, you, you got to play poker. Watch a little bit of ESPN poker to yeah. get out. So some of you may go, well, Mark, you said, I have 180 days to pay. Go borrow from my mom and just pay it. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play poker. I'm going to negotiate a lower amount. And then tell him mom's going to give me the money. I'm not just going to go borrow from mom and pay him. You're saying I could negotiate? Yes, you could. Reality check. This little process of negotiation <laughs> and you can't pay and you got to expose yourself and all that. At least a year and a half. This is the longest poker game of your life. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Here, yeah, we're talking two years. It's not like you can email him on Monday on uh, January 3rd. Hey, I owe you, but you know what? My mom's going to give me. Were you willing to take 30 cents on the dollar? And they email you back. Yeah, sure. So yeah. Sure. We're good. <laughs> no, you're at the poker table and the IRS is the dealer. And they're like, this is them turning the card. <laughs> they're going like, yeah. It's good to, yeah. So you got to, this is going to take a long time is what we're saying. Yeah. So don't, this is why these radio show commercials, TV commercials are, in our opinion, a lot of times uh, considered scams. Because they make it sound so easy. Yeah. They do. It's not that they're not right. You can settle with the IRS. You can negotiate. And these techniques we're talking about, you will use. Yeah. But buckle up. And you know what's been happening with the entire time in this process? Your penalties and interest are adding up. Yeah. If they don't cut a deal. And here's the other thing is, 
you're not counting on being broken a year or two by the time this thing's done. Yeah, you know, and so now sometimes it's like, you know, there's a situation and you really are and you're going to stay broke and you're not going to, your business isn't going to grow or, but you know, cause at the time you cut the deal, you're, they're going to be updated. You're going to be updating your financial statement. Um, and so you've got to stay broke. <laughs> yeah. Let's give a couple hard luck examples that would be good in situation. Some good examples of this. Let's say, Heaven forbid, uh, you're married, and you you and your spouse dies, and uh, there, the business goes down the drain. Uh, there's a big tax liability. You put your husband or wife in the ground, and um, and this is probably be more on the maybe the maybe it's a female breadwinner, maybe it's a male breadwinner, but the non breadwinner is left holding the bag, and they don't have a lot of options to create income, and there's a huge liability. They see themselves really living a very different lifestyle for the next five to ten years. They they're maybe they're able to get onto Social Security. Maybe there's they're going to start picking up a job at the local um, Piggly Wiggly. They're just there. There's not many options. You, that's a great candidate for cutting the deal because there's no future chance the IRS is going to get their money, and there's no and you don't have a future plan for big money. Uh, they're going to try to figure that out. Um, another example would be maybe you're single and you get in an accident and you're disabled. You you literally have lost your uh, ability at livelihood, uh, career, ability to make money and a career and all that. And and it's, a, it's an ugly situation. You might have a four to five year window that's not looking good. How do you deal with the IRS makes sense. The IRS is going to see that you are disabled. You will literally provide medical reports to prove that. And they're like, all right, we tap out. And, and the poker game ends a year and a half from now or more because they finally figure out you're telling the truth. Now, let's just say you have a crappy year in real estate. Things don't go well. You owe the IRS a hundred grand and you're broke. You don't have much uh, and you can't pay the IRS. So you're like, I'm going to go cut them a deal. The IRS is going to say, okay, tell us why you can't pay this in the future. Uh, well, and deep down, you're like, well, I guess I could because I'm going to go out and make, I'm a real estate guy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have a good year or two years. I'm going to cash them out, but I want to cut a deal now. If the IRS can see any sort of horizon of your career where you're going to make that hundred grand, they're not cutting a deal. They are not cutting a deal. So when you call these folks on the radio sh programs or the TV shows and they go, we can settle with pennies on the dollar. It, and you have the ability to pay the IRS back in the next five or six years because you're not disabled and you don't and you have and, and you do have skills. Forget it. It's not happening. So, yes, you could be broke right now. But if the IRS, this is the, the secret. If the IRS thinks you can pay that back in six years, they're going to make sure they don't cut a deal with you. So that's kind of the trick. Mm -hmm. So yes, mom's loading you money. That's still a sidebar to the fact they're like, hold it. You have a great career. You're going to make money. Yeah. Forget it. You yeah. shit. It's like, <laughs> yeah. so that's an important point. Um, one other thing I want to bring up, because it's always a common question is, well, I'm just going to file bankruptcy then. Now, I was actually looking into this here just because the rules have changed a little bit on bankruptcy and whether you can actually bankrupt a tax debt. Traditionally, you not you were never able to bankrupt the IRS. The IRS is like, nah, you could go bankrupt your mortgage, your credit card, but student loans, tax debt, we you got to pay us. You know, we're the most important creditor out there. So, um, but uh, if they are, I'm just looking into this because I knew the rules changed. If the debt is over three years old in a chapter seven where you're doing a complete liquidation because you're like, I am totally insolvent, meaning I'm broke. I have way more debt than assets. You can actually get some tax debt forgiven in a bankruptcy. Now, remember, there's a lot of consequences to filing bankruptcy. Yeah. Don't plan on getting a loan in the future. You really are going to have to be broke. You're going to have to disclose everything in a process. It's, you know, so, and, but if you have a lot of other financial wreck in your life, plus some tax debt of three three years or older, this might be something you want to consider talking to a bankruptcy lawyer about. We don't do this, um, but it might be worth 
considering talking to a bankruptcy lawyer to see if it if your tax debts are some that could be bankrupt. And notice what Matt just said. Uh, there's a key th point in there. Three years yeah. old after liability. Yes. So if we're on the fall of 23 right now, so 24, 25, 26, we're talking in the spring of 2027, you could finally start opening up a bankruptcy. Right. Do you really want your life in disarray for the next three and a half years? You know what that, that does to you emotionally? Yeah. Family, your relationships? Oh, but I'm going to hold out because I want to cut a deal. Yeah. You know, I'm going to force that. I'm not going to pay the IRS. I'm yeah. going <laughs> to pay them. Okay, yeah. good luck with that. Yeah. Because you know, every other relationship in your life is going to be strained beyond belief. Yeah. But maybe you're sitting there, you're like, I got a 2017 t tax debt. My whole life's upside down. I got judgments all over the place. Maybe it is time for you to go yeah. look into that. It could be possible. I just saying there, yeah. there could be, a, but um, it's not a good plan. This is kind of like you're forced into a corner and you've got nothing else to do. Yeah. Yeah. And I like the word used there too. It's not a good plan. For those that are like, how am I going to get out of this situation this year? And you're trying to make a plan. Yeah. This is not a good plan. Now, for those of you that are showing up to the table now, finally emotionally able to deal with it and you found this podcast or someone sent it to you and we're glad you're here and our heart goes out to you and that time's passed you're you, that's what that was four years ago and you're finally coming up for air you regret it it's over i get it maybe there was some tri triage with family members or career something so immediately talk to a bankruptcy attorney Pay them for an hour. Don't look for a free bankruptcy attorney because they're. What are they going to recommend? Bankruptcy. Pay someone <laughs> for a real consult. <laughs> find out what your options are. Where they're not motivated to sell you their idea. Yeah. But um. Oh, well, all right. A lot of final good advice. Yeah, I think just to go back to where we started, which is get engaged, make a plan, make sure you file, and then start communicating the, with the IRS depending on your situation and what you need. I think a lot of these strategies can be used in, in combination too. I'll just say that. Mm -hmm. So if you're like, I'm going to try the 180 day to pay and see where I get. Even if you're like, there's no way I can pay that 180 days. We'll go get it because it's out there and it's automatic and you don't have to f file this stuff with the IRS if you owe a less than 100 grand. So, and then at the end of 180 days, you can decide, ooh, I'm going to need to get an installment agreement. And then if you fail on the installment agreement because you are broke and you still don't have money, you can think, hmm, maybe I do need to do it all first. So it's not like you got to pick which I, like these are all exclusive. You might have to use a few of these in the process, particularly if you owe a large amount to get your way through it. Yeah. Well, love it. Everybody, um, you're not alone. Hang in there. There's uh, uh, a way out. Have faith. Get educated. Continue to talk about it. Uh, clo closing down communication with family members and advisors and keeping this to yourself because out of embarrassment or fear is only going to make it worse. Uh, the people that love you will understand and they'll help you through it. And um, our attorneys will give you a straight answer here. And we have a tax pro network with resolution specialists. At, yeah. Our tax pro network has a lot of uh, folks that are just excellent at this resolution game they can give you another perspective and some of you might find some information that contradicts mine and minute mm, okay fight get a third opinion yeah really draw don't look for the answer you want to hear uh keep searching for the right answer because you know things change yeah and so that's a good tip there because there are like cpas or enrolled agents that actually do tax litigation with the irs or go work out these disputes they don't, don't actually have to be an attorney so if you're an enrolled agent or a cpa and there's many marks tax pro network that do that our firm does it a little bit it's not a big specialty in what yeah. we do um so you might want to look there if you're like i need a professional that understands this stuff and good tax planning maybe, maybe look at the main street tax pro network at markjclaw.com thank you for that yeah appreciate it all right thanks everybody see you next week